So directly on my left is, uh, is Ejeris Dixon. Next to Ejeris Dixon is um, Jill Hawk, and next to Jill is uh, Patrick Hess. Um, I'm going to give you some, ask them to give us some context first. If you guys would um, let us know where you grew up, where you went to undergrad, um, what you were doing before Wagner, and also what other grad schools you were considering will lay some groundwork. Jaris, would you mind starting? Sure. Um, good morning and welcome to all of you. My name is Jaris Dixon, and I, I grew up in the South Bay Area in California, so Santa Clara and San Jose. I went to undergrad um, at Yale University, and I majored in African American Studies, concentra concentrating in sociology, and I graduated in ooh, 2002. And um, I moved to New York right after I graduated and became a community organizer. And I worked mostly in grassroots, low-income um, organizations and uh, working on anti-poverty issues, working with um, low-income child care providers, and then um, working with LGBT communities. I, um, and so I, I was, when I was, ooh, what was the last question? Uh -huh. um, what are the schools were you considering? Oh, I was considering um, Columbia and the new school and UCLA, which had offered me a, a free ride for the first year. And I was really struggling with what that meant, because it also meant get, going back and being closer to home. Um, but I ultimately chose Wagner. Okay. Jill, what's your background? Hi, welcome to the Wagner family. Um, I'm Jill Hawk. Jill, you can pull the mic closer, actually. Sure. All right. Um, I am from Long Island, so I think that counts as a native New Yorker. I've been around ever since. Um, I went to Boston University Sargent College, where I studied occupational therapy and graduated in 2002. Um, after that, uh, I came back to New York and worked at Mount Sinai Hospital as an occupational therapist for about five years. Um, I treated brain injury and spinal cord patients, and I was a clinician. Um, in 2006, I decided to come to Wagner and uh, went part-time, finished in 2009, and I've been at Mount Sinai ever since in, in varying roles. Um, my capacity has increased since that time. And Jill, were you considering any other grad schools besides uh, yes. NYU? Um, I was considering Columbia, but um, for me this was a, a pretty clear choice, so it was just Columbia and NYU. Great. So um, Ejeris was in our PNP program, Jill was in our health program, and um, Patrick Hess was in our urban planning program. Patrick, what's your background? So I, I grew up in a suburb of Boston called Andover and went to Boston College. And then after a somewhat circuitous route of jobs here and there in different parts of the country, ended up working um, most recently before graduate school at Wagner in the New York City public school system, first as a classroom teacher and then as a program coordinator administrator in West Harlem, uh, working on school-based and neighborhood issues, uh, which led me to consider urban planning as a, a next career step. Uh, as I was thinking about schools, uh, I applied to and was considering uh, NYU, Wagner, MIT, Columbia, Pratt, and Tufts, I think were the, the leaders, but NYU triumphs. <laughs> so would you share with us now um, what you're doing and how Wagner uh, helped you get there? What was the shift that you were able to make as a result of Wagner? Um, Jaris, when we go, we'll go down again to so, Jaris. So, uh, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> awesome. Um, so right now, I'm the deputy director in charge of community organizing and public advocacy at the New York City Anti-Violence Project. And we work on issues of sexual violence, intimate partner violence, slash domestic violence, um, and, wow, and hate violence as it affects lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer communities. Um, I... The, the shift I made, I used to work at an organization that some of you may have heard of called the Audre Lorde Project, which works specifically with um, LGBT communities of color. And I ran a really innovative but small anti-violence program there. And um, I had 10 years in the field of doing um, community organizing work, but making the shift to go from a program coordinator to the, dep to the director of a, of a program that does national, statewide, and local work was gonna be a shift for me. I knew the strategies programmatically, but I didn't either necessarily have all the skills I needed to work on this level, or the languages, or sometimes it was just also, Wagner helped credentialize me in a way that people wouldn't necessarily see someone from a small grassroots organization having the capacity to do this. I'm now the youngest manager at the organization. I'm 10 years younger than the other um, directors at the organization. Um, and I use skills that I learned from Wagner every single day. 
And so I'm just so thankful that I, I learned them here and that Wagner allowed me to develop the, to do the work that I was doing at the Audre Lorde Project while going to school here so that I could really continue to build my resume, build my skill set, and apply the work that I was doing that, that led to me getting the position I have now. Jill, um, you made a, a slightly different shift. You, you would do what I would call pivoting. Can you describe what you're doing now and help uh, illustrate how Wagner helped you get there? Sure. Um, so I am a project manager in the Department of Information Technology at Mount Sinai, and our department implements capital projects or department-funded projects um, where a business need would benefit from a technology solution. Um, so it's quite different than where I started out, as I'm sure you can imagine from what I said earlier. I was a clinician um, in direct patient care, and for me to make that jump was huge. Um, I, I had always wanted to start in a hospital organization, learn uh, hospital work and healthcare from the ground up. So I began my career as a clinician, but knew that I always wanted to get into an operations track or a management track. Um, so to do so uh, from a clinical degree can, can be challenging. Um, but Wagner really provided me uh, you know, with that framework and a different perspective in terms of the way I looked at my job. So while I was in Wagner, I was actually um, fortunate to get promoted to an entry level management position and then was able to really apply um, the things I was learning in Wagner. I was studying a lot about Medicare reimbursement um, and different uh, financial operations. I was able to apply that to the job I was in at the time. So it, it went hand in hand for me. And it helped um, to redefine myself, I think. It helped um, my peers and colleagues to look at me uh, in a different way. I think as you were you know, saying earlier, put someone in a, in a new role, sometimes you need to be uh, credentialed differently. So once I was able to, to do that and to begin speaking different lingo than my clinical jargon, people, um, you know, I think, gained respect for my skills. It's lovely. Jill, Patrick, um, tell us what you're doing and how uh, Wagner helped you shift your getting there. Sure. So I work uh, at the New York City Economic Development Corporation as a project manager in the development division, focusing on neighborhood redevelopment projects, uh, including on the waterfront in Staten Island, uh, a commercial corridor in the North Bronx, uh, industrial park in the Brooklyn waterfront, and most recently, uh, a stretch of Water Street in Lower Manhattan. Uh, the shift that I made from public education to economic development work, as you might imagine, was not the most apparent to many. And I think during my time at Wagner, I had the opportunity to, I really appreciate the, the phrase that you gave earlier of the framework, the field work, and the network, because um, I realize in hindsight that's exactly what Wagner was able to provide me. Uh, I think having come from community development work in a couple of different capacities to try and step up to what I consider a, a higher level of, of orientation at the Economic Development Corporation where we're looking at projects at the neighborhood level on up through citywide initiatives uh, I really needed to improve my theoretical understanding of, of the way cities work. I needed to improve my ability to navigate the complex systems of the, the city government and the interaction of the public and private sectors. Uh, and then I, I needed to meet people. I needed to know who was who and what they were doing. And without Wagner, I would have had no business walking in the door at the Economic Development Corporation for an interview. And uh, I look back, having a little bit of deja vu right now, having come to this uh, session uh, only a few years ago, standing and sitting in that section of the room and thinking, well, oh, okay, this, this might work. This seems like the, the right next step to take. And, and looking back now from where I sit uh, as a panelist, uh, as an almost alum, actually, there's a little bit of a secret about my participation today. Uh, I started full-time at Wagner, and then in the process of going through classes and, and trying to expand my exposure through field work, as David had referred to earlier, I started an internship at the Economic Development Corporation, and while working there uh, part-time, was able to translate that into a full-time position, shifted to part-time status at Wagner, so I had the experience of both full-time student and then part-time student, and I'm actually just finished my classwork in January, and not technically alum yet because I'll be graduating in May. Um, so a roundabout way of saying that uh, the, the time at Wagner that I've just now finished uh, was a fantastic entrance into the, the work that I'm doing now. So I heard a couple of things. So it, it Jaris um, went deeper into what she was already doing. She didn't, she didn't shift fields, but what Wagner was, I'm, I'm, I'm 
putting together Jairus was allow you to leapfrog in a management level and a much broader impact than you were having before Wagner. Jill did what I would call a pivot. So she stayed in healthcare, but she pivoted the role. Right, so she started as a clinician, stayed in the same hospital, but moved into a completely different capacity than she had started. And Patrick did a double pivot, <laughs> which is not easy to do. Right, started as a teacher and as a school administrator, doing some community development work within the schools and in the communities that he was working in. But while he was in the urban planning program, he got an internship at the New York City Economic Development Corporation. And 25 to 30% of internships will convert into a job offer. So it's a numbers game. And his did. Doesn't always happen, but it sometimes happens. And he was able to do this double pivot um, that's pretty spectacular. So um, they all went to school while working. Some of you will be hoping to work full time while you're going to school, and some of you will certainly be interning while you're going to school. I'm curious what that experience was like for you. Were you able to um, apply what you learned in the classroom to the field, and did the field help inform what you were discussing in the classroom? Jill, you want to start us off with this one? Sure. Um Absolutely. I think that it, it worked bi-directionally. Um, in the classroom at Wagner, I felt that because I was working, I had a lot to, uh, to contribute. I had been on the front line, so to speak. I had dealt with patient care. I knew how you know, a hospital worked to some degree. I mean, not from an administrative uh, perspective at that time, but I was, I was living that role. So I felt that I had a lot um, to contribute in discussion because that was, that was my day-to-day -day activity. And then at work, I was able to start applying um, some of the things I was learning at Wagner. I think I had said before, I, it's a particular course I recall, um, Advanced Payment Systems with Stuart Presser, which is a very specific course um, dealing with Medicare regulations and reimbursements. And the job I was promoted to at the time dealt with these very niche uh, rehabilitation, uh, rehab medicine, Medicare-specific reimbursement uh, issues. And it was, very, it was very niche, and so Stewart's class really allowed me to um, increase my learning and come up to speed quickly, and my job was definitely impressed with, with my ability to understand that. Patrick, um, back and forth between theory and practice and practice and theory? Yeah, I think, like Jill, I had the opportunity to apply almost immediately some of the things that I was studying in my classes. And I think an additional benefit that I gained from working full-time and going to school part-time was that since I knew that in the double pivot that I'd taken, which David so artfully coined, I was on a new track and was committed to it for the foreseeable future, that the work experience that I had allowed me to choose my classes in a way that was, I think, much more targeted and much more relevant to my personal experience than maybe I would have had the opportunity to do otherwise uh, if I'd been going to school only uh, full-time and maybe having internships here and there. So I think the experience of you know, taking a, a common core class comes to mind, financial management, which for urban planning students is, is certainly a useful skill to have, but is not necessarily offered as a, a core class in many programs uh, around the country for urban planning students. But through that course, once I had started the Economic Development Corporation, I realized that in order to figure out which levers were being pulled to mobilize the public sector's capital and to influence the direction of mega projects like Seward Park and the Second Avenue Subway, Highline Park in uh, the Meatpacking District. Uh, oftentimes it comes down to what's the bond market doing for, for municipal bonds. And so I ended up taking a municipal bond course, which a number of my friends in the urban planning program thought, what? But uh, I was feeling very lucky to have had that opportunity and was able to expand the I guess, considerations I made on my course selection because of the work I was doing um, during the, the daytime hours. So, Ajaris, you also were working while you were going to school, the, the interplay with theory and practice? Yes, I was, I was working, and um, I applied every project I could to the work that I was doing because I was starting a very small, new anti-violence program that focused on addressing issues of violence as they affected LGBT people without using the criminal justice system. So um, my policy class, I did research on alternative to incarceration programs for hate violence. Within my evaluation class, I focused on evaluating LGBT programs and the challenges that, it, that, that they bring. And so 
I was, I was constantly, um, I took a geographic information systems class um, that allowed me to map the incidents of violence that I was working on and to, to bring that in because many times law enforcement uses mapping as a way to kind of think about strategies to target violence, but it doesn't happen as much in the nonprofit or even in prevention. So I was continually using it and learning and it allowed me, I didn't realize how I was becoming an expert around these issues through the work that I was learning at Wagner that allows me to speak in so many different um, arenas um, with, with expertise. So I, I completely, and I would encourage people to work and to use and to use your work to, to build your, what you're doing. But how did you juggle, juggle it all? Was it easy? Oh, it was so hard. <laughs> It was so hard, and particularly I hadn't, it was the first time I had done anti-violence work, so I was actually dealing with cases, I was dealing with cases while I was having school, and I always seemed to be dealing with, this might be graphic, but I was dealing with murders in finals, and so that was really, <laughs> that's challenging, um, but at the same time, it was so enriching and rewarding. I had a kind of flip schedule. I would go to school um, during the day and go to work at night, which is different than a lot of part-time students, um, but it's because I was doing community-based work. So I would be meeting with my volunteers um, and my clients at th that time because it was easier for them. Um, so it was incredibly hard, but it was also very rewarding. Every time I walked into the office, I knew why I was at Wagner. Mm. Um, I knew that I was there to gain skills, to bring them back to the communities that I was working with every day. And as, as a survivor of violence myself, I knew I was the right person to do this work, and Wagner helped me become even more of a leader in that work. So I'm, I just felt incredibly clear with my I was successful because my purpose was so clear and I was reminded of it every day Jill how'd you juggle it sure. um, it it's not easy but you can do it I mean anyone can do it if you apply yourself to that um, I had a point in my career as I said part of the time in Wagner where I was a clinician and so I wasn't even in front of a computer some of the time I mean I couldn't even check a Wagner email I was with a patient and so um, and, and that was tough um, and then as I transitioned to more of an office-based job that became a little bit easier um, but you just you just apply good time management you set realistic um, expectations for yourself and you know, you keep the eye on the prize. That was that was the way I thought about it. I, I would be excited every day that I left work that I got to go to school afterwards. I looked forward to it every time I stepped out of the door um, because it was so stimulating. So you just stay focused on the goal and, and you can do it. Patrick? Yeah, I think like both Jill and Jarrah said, the, the clarity and the ambition that I imagine many of you already have or you wouldn't be here or are working on refining. I know that when I sat in your seat, I expected to explore the overlap of urban planning and community development, potentially with schools. And so if you don't know exactly what you're doing yet, that's okay. But I would say that as you work through juggling work and classes, and I highly encourage you to get involved in extracurricular activities, as you work on combining all of those things, I think the, the drive and the, the hunger for change that you all have already, otherwise you wouldn't be here, will be what carries you through. And I think many, many people in Wagner are in the same position that, that we all were in, in different permutations. And so there's a, a shared experience of, I'm not just a student, and I'm not just an intern, and I'm not just a partner, and maybe I'm not just a parent, uh, maybe I'm not just a transplant. Maybe I'm not just a New York City native. There's, uh, as uh, Tyra Liebman was speaking about earlier, a lot of things happening at the intersection. And so I think one great benefit of going to school at Wagner is there's a lot of people in the same boat, so to speak. And so I think as they pointed out, it can be hard, but it is eminently doable. And I think you'll come out the other end much stronger and much more prepared than um, those who go to grad school and only are in grad school. So let's talk about a, uh, uh, what kind of grad school this is in one capacity, which is that we don't have a campus per se. So we don't have a football team. We don't have a homecoming. Um, you walk out of the any NYU Wagner building and you're on the streets of New York. Uh, our, we do have intramural sports. I do want, do want to let you know. Um, in February, there is tug of war and dodgeball, and, um, and rocks, papers, scissors. 
uh, we are currently the NYU Bobcats, but when I was an undergrad at NYU in the 70s, we were the NYU Violets, which instill a lot of fear in others. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the New York City advantage, right? What is the, what's, what locational advantage do you have as a result of having gone to school here? Patrick, you want to lead us off on Sure. This? I think for the urban planning students, it's an absolute no-brainer. And I imagine for a number of you, policy, health students, et cetera, there's a lot of commonality in that, as, as David mentioned, anytime you walk out of an NYU building, you're in the city. And I think uh, as students of cities and how to make them work better, how to improve the lives of their residents, how to uh, improve the efficiency of, of the systems. You only need to walk out the door, walk down the street, attend a lecture, network with other graduate students in the city, uh, meet and mingle with professional organizations, uh, talk with adjunct professors. There's, I think, uh, a misperception or sometimes an overestimation of the uh, necessity of having a vast bulk of full-time faculty to, to really bone up a uh, graduate school. And my experience of working with adjuncts, which NYU Wagner uh, has a number of, uh, was fantastic because these are, are people that are working in the field, have ex tremendous experience to share, and know what happens when the rubber hits the road, when you move out of the textbook, out of the journal article, into the field. And so the locational advantage that NYU has above even the other New York City schools, I think, is, is bar none. Joe? Well, I have to start by saying, again, I went to BU, so we, we don't have a football team. I, don't, I barely know what that is. Um, we don't have a campus. Um, so this, this was natural for me, and I, I love Manhattan, so um, I obviously felt at home coming here. Um, in terms of the, uh, the advantages career-wise, I mean, for me, there's so many uh, amazing hospitals in this city and so many um, community-based programs um, that although I've been at Mount Sinai for many years, I still feel like the possibilities are endless. And I think that you can get any experience that you want to have. It's New York. There's any experience available. There's an infinite number of institutions, internships, whether they be you know, hospitals, community organizations, not-for-profits. I mean, you can get any experience that you want here. So. But. I can't imagine anything better. Did Jaris anything to add? I mean, I think I would say Wagner's also, like, I, I, I'll just say it the way I think of it. Wagner is hooked up. <laughs> so, like, so in terms of just having, like the adjunct faculty are incredible. You have access to faculty in so many different nonprofit organizations, city organizations. Just start talking about what you want to do and who you want to meet, and the networks will take you there. I had more opportunities offered to me than I could take advantage of, um, which, which I didn't really know what to do what to do with, and, and that, I thought that was inc incredible at, at Wagner. And New York City is a microcosm, there are so many communities here. There are so many op opportunities just being in New York City that if there are specific communities you want to work in, or even if you don't want to work in New York City, but you want to, New York City has so many networks statewide and um, nationally and internationally that I actually think it's an incredible place where even if, if you're not sure what you want to do, you have a lot of options here. David, I just want to, can I ask something real quick? I just want to make sure that I, I don't mischaracterize the NYU Wagner full-time faculty. They are also quite hooked yeah, up. They're awesome, too. And many of them have, have made the shift over time from public sector to private sector to academia and back. And some of them, I think, uh, I don't know of any examples off the top of my head, though I did have my debt management professor was working both in the, the private field and was teaching as a full-time faculty member. So I, I didn't want to undercut the full-time faculty that Wagner has. They're also fantastic. And you'll be hearing from some of them shortly. Nice plug, Patrick. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask you one last question, then I'll open up the floor for some uh, Q&A. Uh, so uh, we, we, we use the phrase key moments often here. We realize that um, uh, going to grad school in life is uh, dotted with things that we remember, a key moment. So I'm, I'm going to you can answer one of two questions. So is there a key moment that you remember from your time at Wagner, or is there a key moment since you've graduated or finished your coursework, Patrick, that said, "Damn, I'm really glad I went to Wagner." Well, I think it's it's somewhat cliche and 
definitely corny, but I remember attending the orientation, uh, which is outside of the city at uh, a summer camp that has closed for the season. It's in late August, I believe. And I remember walking across a field, uh, literally walking across a field, the sun was shining, <laughs> and I'm surrounded by, as I realized at the time, this amazing group of dedicated, intelligent, curious people who were driven to make some type of positive change in the world around them. And I'm actually, this is again cliche and corny, but I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Because at that time I realized, wow, okay, I had these other choices and I could have you know, continued working and not gone to grad school at all. But instead here I am walking across this field on my way to lunch at a picnic table. And yes, this feels absolutely right. I am very glad that I made the choice that I did. And I look forward to what at that time was uh, you know, a few years ahead of me. Ijeris, a key moment? I, I had a key moment after Wagner because in Wagner I discovered my inner data geek um, and I took so many statistics classes. And so um, we were at work and we were working on these reports and I was like, well, we can't analyze the data this way because of blah, 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 blah. And I was like, did that just really come out my mouth? <laughs> and, you know, so, and, and my boss and everyone else is looking at me and I am now the resident data expert in my organization and for our national coalition. And I was like, I could have never done that. I could have never done that and realized the power of quantitative data for marginalized communities. Like these are communities that data is used against so frequently. And I'm now like, like one of those people that can say, this is how we turn this out. This is how we use this to, to build power for, for marginalized communities. That I could, I was not that person. I, and, and now I have, I'm not only a data geek, I, I'm a data converter. I teach other people about why data is useful. And that's all Wagner. <laughs> Jill? Um, I've had a similar experience, I think, that, that I was mentioning before, where uh, something you know, comes out of your mouth, some sort of you know, technical jargon, whether it's data-related or healthcare lingo, when someone looks at you like, how do you know this? Because you're reinventing yourself. And you know, there's a time where um, they may not yet realize what you're becoming, but you realize what you're becoming. And, and you're just in this um, transitional period. So I guess that would be one. Um, and another brief example, as I had mentioned to David, my boss is a Wagner alum from 1985, I think. And when she sat me down for our interview, one of the first things she said was, I went to NYU Wagner too. And you know, we didn't, we didn't go into great detail, but it, it, just, it just was a commonality. It just was a common bond and a common um, way of thinking. So it's a nice connection. So we, I often think of um, undergrad as an uh, opportunity to um, figure out your personal self, personal identity, and graduate school as an opportunity to uh, fully flesh out your professional identity. And there's a distinction there. Um, we are a professional school, and I've had the privilege of working with each three of these folks and continue to have them as part of my network and community. Do you have questions for any of them? Um, that have arisen. I'm just gonna, I saw a hand there and a hand there. So let's go here first. Um, this is a question for, I guess, Patrick, but I you can answer it. Um, how did you get your internship at the um, Economic Development Council? Was that hard? Did it take a while? Um, was it paid? Right. Yeah, that kind of thing. Great. So the question was, how did you get your internship at the New York City EDC? Was it hard? Um, was it paid? And um, Patrick? Well, I think on the, on the one level, it was hard in that I had already gone through a year's worth of time at Wagner. And without that, probably, as I mentioned earlier, wouldn't have been able to walk in the door. And so in that sense, it was hard. Uh, it was also a little bit frustrating that there were, as Jill mentioned earlier, so many options for internships. Not necessarily that they were just lying on the ground and you could go over and pick them up, but the number of organizations city agencies, departments, uh, state offices, uh, nonprofit associations, et cetera, that are in the city made the, the selection process potentially difficult. And then the actual application for the internship and the interview process were quite smooth. There were a number of NYU Wagner people already working in the division where I was uh, in eventually interning. and. Not to say that the doors were thrown open and I was allowed to walk in without having said Bo Peep. Uh, the, the process was smoothed by the fact that Wagner, as Ijeris so uh, appropriately said, is, is hooked up. And 
Uh, in that sense, the process of moving from the vast network of, of possibilities to the, the specific agency um, made it much, much easier. And then that internship did happen to be um, paid. Uh, it wasn't fantastic pay, but it was pay. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, friends and classmates that had both. There was some paid, there was some unpaid. Great, and there was a question over here, yes. Yeah, okay, um, so EJRC talked a little bit about some of the skills you gained, um, like GIS and data management. Um, <laughs> and I was wondering if you could talk about other skills that you apply at your job, and then also um, maybe talk about like the interplay between community organizing and management, and sort of what it was like coming into a sort of a management school with a community organizer. Completely. So I definitely use my financial management class, um, which is really good because otherwise, not you know, it happens. But I'm the new I'm the new chick in the job, so I need to be able to really understand how my budget interplays and be able to say why isn't this line item like what's going on right here. So I use financial management. I use my evaluation class. I use my economics classes many times when I'm interacting with either. Um, organizations that want to say, well, the reason we can't pass this policy is because of, you know, the, like, like, and they start to use a lot of economic jargon. And so I can start to say, oh, okay, well, that's great, but, and, and I can um, apply that. And, and the reason I thought, like, I came into grad school recognizing that as a community organizer, and, and particularly as, like, someone who's very progressive, um, we were using the same strategies over and over and hitting the same walls. Like so from whether it's economics or statistics, um, I was like, I want to study the system and utilize those tools and utilize them for the for the politics or the communities that I care about. So for me, it was very I did not take a lot of like classes on like working with um, low income communities of color because that was my background. I took classes specifically to expose me to language and lingo and networks that were um, outside of my reach and to find ways to utilize that language for the work that I'm doing now. So I do that and I also, now in the role that I'm in, a lot of people who I knew from organizations I used to work with call me up and say, I'm having this problem. Um, can you talk to me about what's going on? And I can say completely, this is what's happening. This is what, you know, these words mean this. And like, we can work together to address this issue. So I think it's a critical step for community organizers who are looking to, I had great, polit I had great politics, great policy ideas, no ability to move them, no power behind me. I am now in a different place. Um, and that's why I think it's really important to make that shift. Great. Let's take one more question. Yeah. Um, so I'd like, I've heard a bit about community and the Wagner community here, and I'd like to hear from you guys that, you know, you've had these really busy schedules while you've been, <laughs> while you're working and studying, and sort of outside the classroom, I'm curious what the Wagner community meant to you. Mm, that's great. Mm. Are you still hooked, right? So if we're hooked up, are you still hooked in, and how hooked in were you when you were at school? Right? So Patrick was pretty uh, involved early on. Yeah, I yeah. think um, one thing I will say about, and this is somewhat of a, a distinction that the urban planning program has compared to other urban planning programs, potentially at other universities, uh, and I'm not sure how the other programs experienced it given the relative size. I imagine there's some commonality between the urban planning program, which is usually around 150 students, I think, out of a larger school of 1,000, um, much like the health program is a smaller cohort, and then you have the larger uh, masses of policy students and uh, management students. At least that's the way it felt sometimes as a planning student. I think one thing that was fantastic about the Wagner experience for me was that through the, the common core classes, I had the opportunity to interact with, befriend, uh, and eventually work both professionally and uh, socially with students especially in the urban planning program, and then also in the, the rest of the mix. So there was an opportunity through the urban planning program to have a, a really tight-knit group of people that shared a lot of experiences, a lot of the same jargon and language and interests in moving forward after school, as well as an opportunity to, to rub elbows with people um, from the various other dis, uh, disciplines that, that Wagner offers. Um, this is a really vague answer, but I think um, it was a really good mix, uh, and I think there's an opportunity to get involved at whatever level you're comfortable with. 
um, outside of the classroom in terms of uh, programs, uh, on campus, research positions, uh, clubs, student government, et cetera. I'm going to take a different slant on this. Um, so as I had mentioned, I worked full time and went to Wagner part time. Um, and I actually think I'm more connected to Wagner now in some ways than I, uh, than I was at that time. Mm -hmm. And your circumstances may dictate that as well. You, you may have a family, you may be working full time, you may have a child and, and not um, be able to attend every single wonderful Wagner event, um, but it's not going to go away. And I think that's something um, that's, that's valuable to keep, that you uh, will always be connected to the Wagner community. Um, a particular example that comes to mind is we started a network at Mount Sinai of Mount Sinai employees who are also Wagner alumni. And we had dinner together and uh, you know formed uh, you know formed some bonds and you know discuss work issues. And it's a little microcosm uh, sub community. So there are certainly networks and pockets of, of Wagner folks everywhere you go. And um, I've remained involved with the alumni association here, working with um, others from the health program. So it can always be a part of your life. Yeah, I think I would I would agree. I wasn't I would I would try to make sure that I was going to like one event a month because that's just I'm very systematic. Um but I um so I wasn't as involved as I wanted to be when I was at school because I was I just didn't have the capacity. But I'm more involved as an alum and I realized, you know, because I had all this guilt around like, oh, I didn't get as involved as I should have <laughs> been. And then I was like, wait, this is not just an experience that's time limited, right? Like Wagner is an experience that goes with you through that throughout the rest of your life. So I can I still go to events. I still engage with people. I engage with alums. And I think the Wagner community is rich and open and friendly and helpful. You know, people are very, very interested whether their faculty, students, or alums from uh, with building those connections and helping each other out in a way that is is genuine, um, which is which is a new experience for me. I was like, what what do you want from me? And it was like, no, we're really just here to connect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope that perhaps in uh, three or four or five years, three or four or five of you will be up here with me. If not, I, I wish you well as well. Um, and if you could give a thanks to Jerris and Jill and Patrick for taking time up from their full-time jobs. <laughs>